Today's episode is a special edition of Homeworthy. We're taking you inside the Kipps Bay Decorator Show House in Dallas, Texas. Inside this sprawling 13,000 square foot estate, 24 designers from around the country each transformed a different room in this Dallas mansion. All of the designers were given a particular space to showcase their design aesthetic. Be sure to comment and let us know what your favorite room is in the house and prepare to be wowed as we take you on a tour of this gorgeous home. But first, a big thanks to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's Homeworthy episode. When it comes to choosing a good wine, I've always been a bit lost wandering the wine aisles, but thankfully I never have to go to a store again now that I've discovered Bright Sellers. The company couldn't make it any easier. They send wine directly to you so you don't have to waste time or money at the store buying wines based off of the label, which is honestly what I've always done. But let's rewind. How did this wine magically show up at my door? I took a quick seven question quiz online that matches me with wines from all over the world that are curated to my taste palette. Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outline tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperatures, and origins. The packaging is completely recyclable, plastic free, and has the smallest carbon footprint in the industry. So now I can get to the fun part. Thank you to Bright Sellers for giving Homeworthy viewers a limited time offer of 50% off their first six bottle box. Click the link in the description below to get started. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Ciao, I'm Alessandra Branca. This is my living room at Kipps Bay, Dallas. Um, having been granted this amazing view and this incredible uh, garden beyond this room, I chose not to fight it and to celebrate it and to create a living room that was more like a uh, tree house. So the challenge in this room was the height of the room. The room is a 20 foot 24 foot tall room. Um, and as you know, there aren't many spaces that are quite that tall except for churches. Having been raised, born and raised in Rome, I felt it was a little bit of a, uh, a temple to something. And in this case, it's really a celebration of nature. The other thing I wanted to do was make a living room that was very livable because too often living rooms are like an oxymoron. They're, they're, they're a room you don't spend time in. And as a result, they are not welcoming. And I find that the most important spaces in homes are the ones, if you notice, you always end up in the space where everyone goes all the time. In this case, we created this wonderful little setting at the windows to take advantage of the amazing view. Um, the uh, table is a 1960s uh, wicker table. The chairs are Carl Springer. And the idea is that you can come and sit in this corner. You can work here. You could have dinner here. You could play cards. You could have drinks. But the important thing in decorating a home and more importantly, a living room is to create a space that is that gives you more reasons to go to it. So the more excuses you have to be in the room, the better the room gets. Um, the other thing we did is we designed this really huge, huge fireplace, which in this room looks small, but the fireplace is 82 inches wide, which is seven feet, which you can imagine uh, makes you realize the scale of the room, but it really sort of gives the room a foundation. The second thing we did is when we designed this wallpaper for the room, we did a custom paper, we scaled it to suit the scale of the room, and then we I did a degradé pattern, which is where it, it basically became lighter and lighter as it went up, not unlike how nature works and how when you plant plants, they become thinner at the top. Um, I like the play of patterns, so we used a stripe that is from Lisa Fine, and then I used one of our tartans, which we created, which is based on our stripe. We did a mix of relaxed wood finishes, that's a 1940s uh, drop front bar. The chair is an 18th century chair. Um, the mix of periods is kind of a surprise too. I believe that the best rooms are rooms that are mixed, that are collected, and that are collections of you, your life, the things that you love. And again, that's another way to bring people to a space. If you put yourself into the room, 
you end up with a much more comfortable room, not only for you, but for the people that you enjoy spending time with. Well, the trees. Um, the trees are actually 15, 16 feet tall, which gives you a sense of the scale of the room. The trees were brought here from Florida. They are um, a, a type of ficus tree, which I love that has this long leaf. And they will be going back to Florida and be planted in my garden in Florida. So they have a better life, I think, coming their way. Um, but in the meantime, the reason I did these tall trees is because they brought the scale of the room down a bit. Because otherwise, you would be so small in your scale within that space, you need something that makes you feel normal. So if you notice, when I walk up to it, this, and I'm not that tall, but this is... I'm under the canopy and I'm 5'8". So if you go to see the scale of the tree, you know, it really makes a difference. The vignette is really a, um, a ceruzed oak 1940s piece that I loved because it gives you a chance to use a bar. That's a mother well above it. Um, this is uh, Ashley Hicks uh, sculpture, 1970s Italian sort of light sculpture. The chair, again, is an 18th century chair, so we have that mix happening over and over again. Um, the, the benches, tables, benches are Chiro. Uh, there's, you know, the mix of high and low is another thing that I think is sort of important in a home. I think you should not be intimidated by bringing things that are slightly more humble and putting them next to things that are special. Because in a way, that's like wearing a pair of jeans and a great t-shirt and a great ring. You know, it's the same thing in decorating. You have to have all the different layers and feel comfortable. That's really, in the end, that's all the thing. The, it's the only thing that matters. It needs to feel good. Hi, my name is Isabel Ladd from Isabel Ladd Interiors and welcome to the Kipps Bay South Terrace, affectionately called La Terraza Tropical. With all my cabana vibes. So, the inspiration started with the invitations that I received to be a part of the show. There were these graphics here with the tropical birds and the tropical flowers. So I reached out to the graphic designer and asked his permission. He said yes. And out from there, I had the, the fabric printed and then I had my seamstress make it into curtains and then it became the, the canopy here in the daybed. Okay, I'm a maximalist. I cannot have limits. So if you were to ask me, what's my favorite fabric? What's my favorite pattern? Like, I will not give you an answer because I love it all and I need it all. And so here it is, all of it. Also, I love camouflage. This is my version of camo which is also repeated in wallpaper here in this bar. Because when I was given this outdoor space, I immediately had a panic attack thinking, what am I going to wallpaper? So that's where I found a vintage bar because this girl loves vintage and new. But the top of the bar was like solid tan. So it needed a makeover and that's when I bedazzled it with wallpaper. And then I created another camouflage moment with this tea towel here. So here's my little bar. So what inspires my design is my Brazilian heritage and it reads just like a carnival. Loud, vibrant, unapologetic, like all the things. If you take anything away from this, let this be a lesson to you. Mix and don't match. Beige is not a color, and more is more, less is a bore. So here's my little dining moment. Oh, as a maximalist, the Kipps Bay team gave me one space. They were like, here's the outdoors. But a true maximalist is like, I see the one space you gave me, I'm going to make it five. So that's why I have like a dining moment, a bar moment, a lounge moment. I even have a napping moment here in the day bed. It's outfitted with linens underneath. I've got a cocktail moment. I've got a canoe moment. So I have maximized every inch of real estate here. So welcome to the Cocktail Kiki, a small intimate gathering, a little place where you can just spill the tea, or in this case, the rosé. So this cocktail here 
is my first stab at product design where I was inspired by a fire pit, but all I did was I substituted logs for rosé. So this top is made from a Cambria quartz where I just cut a hole, dropped in a Kohler sink, and then just filled it with like all the liquids. So with these chairs here, I took all of my favorite fabrics, put them on here, and this, oh wait, this is another camouflage moment. Do you recognize this trim? And what I've done here is I just piggybacked some trim just because more is more and I could not pick like what is just one trim to use here. So here we are at Kipps Bay, a very prestigious fancy show house. I think I'm the only designer to use the words yard sale. So I got this aluminum canoe, had it bedazzled with murals on either side and take a look on both sides because it's two different prints because I could not just pick one print. And then I upholstered the inside in a fabric that was inspired by this mural here. So then I had to think, how am I going to, to tether the canoe to the tree? And I cannot use regular rope. So I partnered with Samuel and Sons to custom make a tape trim and then I hung tassels incrementally from it. And that is how that canoe is wound up. I'm Jeffrey Weissman from Fisher Weissman Brugioni in San Francisco, and this is the dining room. We had a relatively big volume, not a very big footprint, where we were really trying to create some drama and create a seductive room to want to have dinner in. The room has very high ceilings and this enormous bay window, but it's also got big openings on both sides to the rest of the house. So we went with this deep red all over the walls and the ceiling, created this gigantic version of our Constellation series from Fisher Weissman Collection for the central chandelier. It's actually taller than I am. And then we added four pendants in the corners over pedestals of the same design with the idea that I don't like big flowers in the middle of a dining table. And here you create four spots for big scale flowers at a party. And instead of having the sideboard on the end wall, we thought, Let's do very dramatic artwork that really draws you into the room using gold again, uh, paintings by Andrew Fisher. And we moved the sideboard to this beautiful red lacquer side uh, console also from our collection in the window. So it's interesting that the scale of the house is quite large, but this room really lends itself to a table for eight. And we thought instead of trying to squeeze 10 or 12 at a, at a skinny rectangular table, it was much more fun to create this big oval. So we used two Sevilla bases from our collection with this custom Rosso Lepanto marble from Stone Boutique in Dallas. And then designed the carpet, which was made by Mark Nelson Designs in New York, kind of an Art Deco sunburst shape. And the chairs are vintage mastercraft from Moxie interiors in Houston, covered in Holland and Sherry silk velvet. And Holland and Sherry also provided the beautiful wool sateen and the trim for the drapery. My favorite thing about the room is the chandelier because I think it's so fun. It's got a little bit of a modern vibe, but because all of our pieces are wrapped in paper mache before they're gilded, it's got this very artistic, soft touch, and I love the hit of glamour in the room. So the frogs were inspired by Tony Duquette, who was a great friend of Andrew Fisher and loved toads. And these are actually rubber that we gild with 24 karat gold. So they're quite light and can't hurt anything, but quite precious at the same time. Hi, I'm Christopher Peacock and welcome to the uh, 2022 Dallas Kipps Bay Kitchen Suite. Uh, here I am uh, in the space. It's a very large space. We have three areas actually, which is why I'm calling it the kitchen suite. We have a main kitchen, entertaining area, dining area, and a food prep area. And then we have a wonderful butler's pantry and also a food pantry, a walk-in food pantry. So it's quite a large uh, space, um, but appropriate for a home of this stature. Um, the main kitchen area is very big. Uh, I wanted to um, make it very convenient to, to cook in. So the actual cooking part of the kitchen is quite consolidated and uh, very easy to use. Um, but given the size of the space, I then introduced this second 
island which we call the entertaining island and we have this wonderful entertaining area with lots of seating but I think in a room like this and in a house like this you, one should expect gatherings of uh, um, lots of people uh, who want to sit and have fun and, and people relax in kitchens you know they they're not worried about um, spilling a drink or setting something down on a counter surface so by creating this this entertaining island uh, we have a trough sink here which is great which you can fill with ice and chill some champagne um, we have wine storage we have uh, a microwave for making popcorn and um, it's it's a great way to kind of keep the entertaining and the 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 friends uh, out of the main working part of the kitchen which is over here so they can be in the kitchen but they're not going to be in the way similarly if you've got kids that you need to feed you can feed them here and keep them out of the main kitchen area and hopefully uh, have some control. Because of the size of the space and how much light comes into the room, I wanted to make it somewhat more intimate. So I've used um, these deep charcoal gray uh, cabinets on the bottom, um, but then lightened it up on the top with uh, a, a sort of an off-white uh, hand-brushed uh, paint finish. I've also included wood into the kitchen. So you can see these, these beautiful accents of this ceruced white oak um, and this features throughout the whole uh, the, the whole suite but it, just to break it up a bit and kind of lighten it up um, so the insides of the upper cabinets uh, are also in the oak and then I have these feature drawers which are wrapped in uh, brass and then uh, have oak drawer fronts on them so the hardware itself is my own uh, design it's proprietary and it's in a, an aged antique brass finish which is slightly hammered um, the key to make, making a kitchen feel homey I guess is is um, it, well listen first of all the kitchen is a place of work right it, it is if, if you are going to use it and you are going to prepare food in it then you want to make sure that you fill it with all of the things that, that you need um, I'm a great believer in um, having things on the counter having things accessible and not having everything put away um, so I like the character of pots and pans and knives and cutting boards and metalwork and all of those things so so I think that alone makes it feel real and um, homey if you like and then color color is important I think um, a lot of people shy away from using color and being dramatic with their color um, and I find it very successful when you do that so the best looking kitchens to me are the ones where the clients have allowed us to really get creative and colorful and like the orange here on the walls I assume this is you yes absolutely it's uh, it's not my own wall covering um, it's uh, it's from Cole and Son uh, but I've always loved this particular uh, color and um, I love the subject matter. It's fun, I think, um, and maybe unexpected in a kitchen. You know, I think it's a little more dressy. Kitchens are not always given the same uh, decor as, as some of the more formal rooms, but I think by having a dressy wallpaper, it just makes it, uh, it elevates the room. Um, and in this case, given how large the room was, it helps uh, just make it a little more intimate. So as we come out of the main kitchen, uh, we come into really the back kitchen and the food storage area. It's a combination of two more rooms. We have our walk-in food pantry. Uh, this is the uh, Costco buyer's dream, I think. So if you were to come in here, you will see that we have um, wonderful, wonderful storage space um, for, and you can see everything. So rather than putting everything behind doors, you can really organize the shelving. Um, it's well lit. And so you can use that for bulk storage if you're buying bulk. We have a cabinetry down below, which can be used for more storage. And you could even use this as a step uh, if you wanted to, to step up to the higher shelves. So that's why we've designed it that way. It's got this great chalkboard, which is a great place to write a message or uh, uh, you know, leave a note for somebody. And then uh, as we come out of here, we're into the butler's pantry. And this is the more formal space for really entertaining and uh, st a staging area for the formal dining. So in here we have a wonderful uh, china pantry, we have a coffee maker, we have wine storage down below, uh, we have an ice maker right in here, and then obviously we have a place to set out um, trays for food and uh, a second sink, and then great china storage and glassware storage, for, uh, all of which will serve the main um, dining area. Here we even have a little butler's tray um, which is a nice touch which I made so this is a, a lovely butler's tray which can be kept there and then used for serving as needed to bring things in and out 
We really do live in our, our kitchen areas these days. I mean, I always call it a living room that we happen to cook in. Um, it's not so much a kitchen anymore. It is the living room of the house. So much happens. It could be homework, it could be food, it could be entertaining friends. Um, it's a home office. Uh, it's all of the above. So uh, ever since uh, the pandemic, really, everything changed and people spend so much time at home now and so much time in and around their kitchens. <laughs> We embrace that. Uh, so that's what this is really. It's a kitchen for everything. You have entertaining, cooking, plenty of storage, and it's beautiful. Hi, my name is Natasha Baradaran. I designed the primary bedroom. Um, this room was just a boring envelope when we inherited it. And everything you see here was added. And I just felt like it had such a large scale since it's such a large home. And for me, the bedroom has always been a place that feels should be like a sanctuary or a place that should feel more inward and serene. And so what I decided to do is basically, uh, this is a love letter to womanhood where someone like myself would uh, reside. You know, usually I'm designing for clients. This is something that I would design for myself. And we took the angle of it being a little bit more of an inward uh, meditative space. I think after the years or the couple years we've just had, um, I'm a lot more about stillness and inward thinking. And we find that a lot of our clients are practicing meditation um, to just deal with these uncertain times. And more and more that is taking place in a primary bedroom as opposed to a gym. And so we were very inclusive of that with a meditation pillow that we made out of buckwheat and like a rose quartz side table and crystals really used throughout this space. We have rock crystal hanging from the chandelier. Our table lamps are actually slices of rose quartz. Uh, we have rose quartz in our bubble sconces from Italy and still works with our textiles and furniture pieces. I generally am very much inspired by fashion. So for me, it's like a fashion forward palette with violet blues. This fabric is from my collection. It's called Jamba, mixed with dusty rose and minty greens to give, you know, uh, it's a subtle uh, color palette, but a little bit also at the same time unexpected. The headboard is something I designed specifically for uh, Kips. Um, we do a lot of color blocking in my furniture collection. And this idea of wellness, these are rays of sun, I call it the soleil bed that we're actually adding to our collection after this. And it's a way of making the headboard feel like a piece of art, but at the same time, not losing its function and how, you know, um, uh, how comfortable an upholstered headboard could be. So since this room is kind of on the larger side, we found that we wanted to make multiple seating groups beyond the bed in here. So in this beautiful bay window with this incredible view of our stream, I created a circular sofa um, with our fabrics and our textiles. And this is actually going to be launched in our collection in the spring with a resin coffee table. So it's wonderful just to sit and read a book, or if you have a guest in your bedroom, an easy place to have a conversation. Um, and then we moving into the bed area, we have a more typical uh, layout with our desk chaises at the foot of the bed, and then a secondary seating group on this side, which um, allows you to put your feet up on an ottoman, have a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy the art and the sculpture, and again, this beautiful view. So we were really happy to work with uh, Strike and this wonderful fireplace where the stone, I feel, really complements our fabric. And then we've kind of created an overmantle by um, working with this atelier in Los Angeles where they took the motif from our wall covering and basically did this new uh, technique of an applique of mirror where they, they did their take on my Jamba floral and it kind of just sits as an overmantle and a great place to showcase this wonderful art collection um, that again is inspired by our colors and the textures of the space. 
Hi, I'm Byron Risden, an interior designer based out of Washington, D.C., and I designed Taras 107 for the Kids Bay Boys and Girls Club Showhouse, Dallas 2022. So one of the inspirations for this space was to bring the indoors out. Uh, I was really challenged in having an outdoor space, so I decided to do what I do best and approach it in the same way that I would an indoor space, and that's exactly what I did. Everything you see out here is fitted for outdoors, but it has a very indoor livable feel to it. Uh, my style is, uh, I'd like to think of it as classic and uh, globally inspired. You know, I, I'm inspired by spaces and things that I've seen and travels and places I've gone around the world, so I'm always trying to find a way to merge those things in together. I didn't want it to fight with the natural elements, right? We have lots of greenery and we have blue sky, so I really wanted something that was soft, that felt, that felt natural, but also uh, played well off of the, the nature in the space. So here we have the main seating area uh, with two huge, as you can see, fully upholstered sofas and two nice uh, armchairs. Uh, flanked by at this beautiful marble fireplace from Strike that was custom designed and custom made uh, just for this space. And then all the accessories and everything you see here, again, they may not be made for the outdoor, but they can be in outdoors. They're all natural elements, whether it's stone or ceramic or tile. And so everything, everything you can see out here uh, is fine outside. One of my favorite elements in this space uh, is the custom uh, mosaic tile artwork. So because we don't have any walls out here, right? We can't hang any art anywhere. Uh, so I thought of a creative way that we could, you know, bring some art and some pop of color into the background. And so I had these uh, custom mosaic tile art pieces uh, made by a beer dream from Houston, Texas. And they are inspired by the work of Alma Thomas. She was an African-American artist from Washington, D.C. Uh, she was an abstract artist uh, who had very successful career, maybe in the late uh, 60s and early 70s. She was the first African-American woman to have a solo show at the Whitney uh, Museum of Art in New York City. And she made these just for you? <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anthony Barada, and welcome to the study that I've designed. I'd love to show you around. The idea for the study came from work that I was doing in the early 90s. The English style was the height of chic back then. And for some reason, I kind of felt that this room could take on that persona. And um, the interesting part about it is that I started uh, thinking about the English style with its constant coverage of the of the royalty and of course the queen and the jubilee and now her passing uh, we uh, i've been focused on it a lot and we've got like direct uh inspiration from the crown and balmoral castle which sort of has this carpeting that's uh looks very much like the tartan and i i was i kind of um knew that I wanted to do tartan walls and I looked high and low for tartan fabric uh, that was of the right scale and the right coloration. Well, and we didn't find what we liked and I have this wonderful team of Eric Espinoza and, and Jamie Magoon who uh, design a lot of our fabrics and they did this plaid and had it printed in the right size for the room. When I first saw the room, when you pick a room it Kips Bay, they send you a lot of photos of what the room looks like. You have no idea of the scale of the room. Um, and the room was lined with bookcases, walnut bookcases. And I decided I would do this room. I thought it was gonna be an easy fix. So I come down here with my team and they had ripped the bookcases out. I was kind of like, how did I get myself into this particular room? And the other thing is, it has a small footprint. It's not a big room, but it has 24 foot high ceilings, which I mean, in any room that you're doing, it's very, very hard to scale up the furnishings. And I'm not a low person kind of modernist kind of uh, designer. so. The whole idea behind what we're doing here is really pumping up the volume. I like to say when, uh, when I decorate, it's like I'm 
like filling an, a, a bicycle tire with air and letting it blow up. Not to the point where it explodes, but you'll see here that these pieces are really big. And it sort of is the way that I'm able to carry off the high ceiling rooms. Now I have, um, I was pretty, pretty specific about the vibe and I really didn't want to mix a lot of different styles in here. I was very um, uh, conscious that I would use traditional furnishings and a lot of English furnishings. Uh, the big giant sofa, uh, the leather sofa, uh, was, it is in my house in the Hamptons and uh, it's, <laughs> it's on loan. And if somebody wants to offer me a price, I just, I, I, I was like, I'll sell it. And anyway, it is, it is a very special piece to me because it's literally been in my homes for the last 25 years. So it moves around a lot. Um, the other sofa, the big sofa um, that is on the right-hand side of the room is by, done by uh, DeAngelis, who is like a poster to the stars um, in the decorating, uh, in the decorating galaxy. And uh, I have to tell you, I, I had seen a picture uh, by an Italian interior designer and must have been done in the 90s or so, but it has these tassels that tie, it's a slip cover, and the tassels sort of tie up the corner and these, these big luxurious tassels from Samuel and Son, who makes all of the trimmings, um, are, are used on the arms of the sofa to create that tied up look. Very decorate decoratory details. That's what I'm like, the, the room is kind of a celebration of all of the incredible, talented, people, craftsmen that go into this kind of high style level of decorating. It doesn't, it, they're few and far between. Uh, like our decorative painter, his name is Osmundo Echeverria, who um, painted the, the mantle. I found this mantle in upstate New York. It's 19th century American. It was a little on the dowdy side and it went to Osmundo and I wanted him to turn it into, um, the inspiration was Wedgwood uh, and they, it's black uh, Jasper, j inspired by black Jasper Ware Wedgwood and he was able to carry it off in the most magnificent way. When I first came into the room, the drapes, I realized the drapes would be so important to this room because conceptually, I was thinking about this as a stage set. So you walk in the door and you see this grand stage and it's like the drapes on the proscenium of a theater. So I came in here and I'm like, wow, we have this giant high ceiling and the shade store who did the drapes sort of got into it too. And so they did, we planned on the one and I was standing here while we were coming up with the final scheme. And I'm like, why don't we do the drapes on both sides? And in the uh, decorating lexicon, we call these portiers. And uh, they're the drapes that sort of separate room from room. And, you know, that was the kind of, uh, style I wanted for, uh, for the, the room. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the room is lessons that I've learned throughout my career. So it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting experience. Some of my favorite pieces in the room, um, are not exactly what you would think. And, um, like take for instance, the coffee table is this stack of giant books. That is actually f from this company by the name of Maitland Smith that it was probably done in the 70s. So it's much in the 1970s, not the 1870s, but it um, has a lot of style. And there's, um, a f there's another piece in here by Maitland Smith. It's this big dollhouse. Again, it was done in the 1970s in this neoclassic style out of mahogany and 
it has it has such a presence and it's so good in this room because it carries the theme of what I'm trying to do here. Um, Hercules is a plaster cast from my own house and um, I started collecting pl plaster casts of statues, um, 19th century casts that were done um, in, in London and in uh, Europe in the 19th century because uh, they would put them in museums because they didn't really have you know, Roman sculptures to show. And a lot of them were uh, used as uh, models for people to sketch. So uh, over the years, I have a pretty big collection of them. And I've actually have, have drawings of them and I have from that were done in the period and I have photographs, early photographs of them too. Hi, my name is Ashley Cathy with Avery and Company. Welcome to my room, pretty in plaid. Come on in. It's a vaulted room with a beautiful uh, window overlooking this fabulous creek and beautiful tree. It feels like a tree house. So we decided to wrap this vaulted room in the most beautiful mulberry plaid that's brand new and do grow grain, three rows of grow grain trim. Um, I don't know if you can see it down here, um, which our wallpaper installers just loved. When we were designing the room, we decided to use one of Pierre Frey's historic iconic prints. Um, we chose this because Mario Boada used it in Kips Bay in the 80s, and we thought it what better to have a nod to one of the most iconic designers in our new fresh way. So that's how we landed on that fabric. When we walked into the space for the first time, it was a complete disaster. Um, one of the walls was mirrored with it. I think originally it had like a ballet bar. Um, there were, it was all white, very stark, boring. So it was really a blank slate, but after a lot of love and care, we got it ready for what it is now. So the sofa we used in our space, since you know, post COVID, it's a little hard to get upholsters to do things in a short period of time. This was from my home. My two uh, golden retrievers had destroyed the back of it, which I had just thrown a blanket on and forgotten about. Thought what better, what better time to reupholster it and use it for Kips Bay. So now I'm one sofa down, <laughs> my own house. <laughs> so when we designed this room, we, we really paid a lot of attention to scale because this is a room with a vaulted ceiling. So we knew it was really important to make sure, since it was a bedroom, we wanted everyone to feel really, really comfortable in it. So we developed the canopy that is about nine and a half feet tall. It, uh, it's right where the break from the vault happens. And we purposefully did a lower mattress so the room would feel still comfortable and you wouldn't feel like you're in this opulent space and we wanted it to be cozy. And that was another way to make that work. We also used lots of different patterns, florals, plaids, stripes, checks, solids, contemporary art, really traditional Porto bedding to create a balance and a modern like play with a traditional. So the end result is a really transitional, unexpected spot. Still, um, we feel that the room is got a lot, of, a lot of movement, but we used similar colors throughout to make it feel cohesive. So one of our very, very favorite sculptors, Jennifer Nakan, who has partnered with David Netto, have this fabulous sculptural lamp line, and we were just so excited and thrilled to use one of their pieces. We try to incorporate them in all of our pro projects, and we love the little, little white urchin lamp. So let's transition from the room to the closet. When you walk into the closet, we decided to use a completely different pattern 
that carry the lavender in. We did a lavender paint and then we upholstered the walls in a turquoise with some green that isn't exactly the same color as the bedroom, but is a totally different geometric shape. But the colors completely blend. We took the plaid and did a separate plaid carpeting in here. Ralph Lauren was so wonderful and loaned us all of these beautiful clothes. Um, kind of a, a nod to our Americana. Our firm has an Americana sensibility. We used an old mirror vanity and created a fabric vanity stand. Um, we did the Roman shade in the same fabric as the wall. So this space would feel really Zen and cozy and you're enveloped in color. We have collaborated with Natika Moran and from Jaipur with Love to do a bespoke carpet collection. And this is one of our signature patterns. We did a custom colorway, colorway for our Kipps Bay room, pretty and plaid. Uh -oh. When choosing the art for this room, we chose photography, some contemporary art, and two pieces from a private collection, one of which being a oil painting with a nude, because what room doesn't need somebody naked, real, or on the wall? Hi, I'm Leslie Martin from m and Interior Design. I'm one half of a duo sister team with my partner, Kim Mearden. And this is our reading room. So I believe it was the previous homeowner's game room. Um, and we wanted to turn it into a kind of a casual take on a library. So the concept would be you'd come in, you'd grab a book that inspires you, and then find the appropriate seating area for your mood. Maybe you're feeling loungy or you want to sit by the fire. Um, and we wanted it to just feel like a, like a big, pattern heavy hug. Um, very British inspired, lots of pattern and color. And um, it's a huge space. It's a thousand square feet with all these interesting ceiling angles. So it was really tricky and it's very asymmetrical. So we had to work on balancing it out. Um, but this beautiful oversized fern pattern from Ixel, um, which they custom made for us in Istanbul. In um, this beautiful kind of cream on taupe colorway. Um, and then we painted all the wood trim out to sort of match the, the tones in the wallpaper. And then we just started filling it with everything we love, like beautiful books and flowers. And because it's a large space, we really needed to uh, separate it into different seating areas. Um, so this amazing couch that came from um, Sewn in the UK is just overstuffed and dreamy. And you're under this amazing um, canopy with a Jasper fabric, and it just feels so cozy. So this medallion bust is from um, Casa Gusto, and it's so amazing, and it's actually paper mache. So it weighs like nothing. Um, yeah, and he's like our little buddy, he just hangs out there in the window, he's so cute. So we always start with our textiles. That's always our jumping off point. So we find one that we just like are passionate about. And in this case, it was this uh, amazing parrot paisley from Sewn. Um, and you know, at first glance, it looks like it's pink, but if you dive into it, there's so many like other taupes and cranberries and this kind of beautiful French blue. And it's from that inspiration fabric that we start to pull out and extract all these other colors. Um, so you'll see in our pillow selection, that's kind of like, all these colors are sprinkled about in all of these pillows. Um, we don't ever want anything too symmetrical, so I don't want you know matching pillows. So it's kind of kind of it's supposed to look like a bit of a hodgepodge, like it just sort of happened over time and was collected. Um, so that's why we don't have a lot of matchiness going on, but we do want to keep it consistent with the colors. So again, this was our starting off fabric that we tried to weave throughout all the all the patterns and colors in the rest of the space. Um, so we found these amazing pillars at a local Dallas antique store called Wolf Hall. And they look like they're marble, but they're not. They're actually just wood painted marble. And they are vintage, um, they think maybe 1950s actually, from Italy. And they're just oversized and big. And I mean, 
what was crazy about it is like the colors in here match so perfectly. Like it's cranberries and kind of dusty blues. So they were, I mean, they were just meant to be in this space. So, and then the ferns, it's kind of like this like subtle nod to the pattern on the walls. Um, again, consistency, but not, you know, in your face matchy matchy, hopefully. So originally this uh, bookcase was not here um, and the room was really unsymmetrical. Um, and so this was kind of just a big empty hole. I'm not sure what they had here, um, but knowing we wanted to do a reading room, we had to give ourselves an opportunity for a bookcase. So we built this all in and trimmed it out. And um, we went extra thick on these shelves because I wanted to add a uh, trim detail. So this is just Samuel and Sons trim, a two inch tape that we put around the front. And from afar, it almost looks like a wood detail, but um, it's actually fabric trim, which is so fun. So this is a French dining table um, that's a little rustic feeling. It's, it's not too fussy. Um, I love these little poles on this um, drawer here. And it's a good size. I mean, it's, I think it's just like a farm table, but um, it brought the right amount of casualness to the space. So the light is from a company called Ironware. And what I, we loved about it was the pebbled glass. Um, not a huge fan of, you know, exposed, exposed bulbs right in your face. So this kind of just diffuses the light nicely. Um, and it's lovely. It's got this old school feel to it, but there's something sort of modern about it as well, which we loved. On the ceiling, we did a lattice work by Fuller Architectural Panels, and we painted it out the same color. We didn't want it to be jarring, but we wanted, again, to layer it with an extra bit of texture, and um, this sort of diamond pattern uh, does such a nice trick of that. It draws your eye up, um, which we needed because the room was starting to feel a little bit caved in. So it kind of draws your eye up, but it doesn't steal anything from the show. So it's just one nice extra touch. There's something really special and sweet about this moment for us. Um, this is an amazing fireplace mantle from Strike, uh, which is Dallas-based company, and they custom created that for us. And I think it's just so cozy. I love the Dale Goffigan art, which is, again, sort of a nod to the theme of the room. Um, but it's just, I don't know, it's just very inviting. So it's probably my favorite nook. Um, so originally in the room, these cabinets existed, but they were solid front, so they just sort of disappeared. Um, but we wanted the books to really shine, so we swapped those out for glass panels and added the lights, and it's just, I don't know, something inviting about it, and I love seeing the books behind the glass. I just, I think that makes them feel extra special somehow. Hi, Homeworthy. Welcome to my space. This is the primary bathroom. I'm Huma Suleiman from Huma Suleiman Design. Let me show you around. The inspiration for this room was this beautiful dome ceiling and the arch window that we have and the beautiful light flowing through it. So I wanted a calming space, um, but a space that you make you feel luxurious. So a calming with the vibe of luxe in it. So what we did, we started with picking the marble we have this beautiful, as you can see on the wall, this Perlanto marble that we have done this fluting all around to create the wainscoting, just to kind of add some depth and um, luxurious feel to the space. To add with that, we went with a dark color marble, the Verde Levanto that you see on the countertop that we used. This is probably one of my favorite pieces in this room. Well, actually I have quite a few pieces, but I love this piece. It's a 13 feet long countertop with the integrated sink in it. And um, we added this, we designed this beautiful cabinetry, the fluted cabinetry done by Bentwood Dallas. And we found a local uh, brass artisan from Stahl Timber who did this beautiful scallop detail just to kind of go along the edges. And um, this countertop, just massive, and it brings that luxurious vibe, the Parisian kind of art deco kind of feel. And Stone Mode are the one who you see all this beautiful stonework here. I mean, honestly, without this craftsman, I don't think my dream would have come true. It, it, it's a craftsman's room. So we also had designed this tub right here. The tub is bicolor on all the plumbing fixtures are bicolor. 
And um, again, we use that dark marble in here. We did this beautiful fluting again to kind of repeat what we have on the wainscoting, as well as this beautiful brass detail on the side, just that little Art Deco Parisian look. I wanted that, you know, the when you're in the tub, just to get in the beautiful outdoor that you can see that creek flowing and the greenery. It's a beautiful ground over there. And I thought this would be a perfect, the sunlight flowing in and you're just taking a bath in here, just perfection. And then we come into the shower area here. The shower, I wanted to, um, it was a lowered ceiling earlier and we just took everything out and made it a very tall ceiling just to kind of go with the height with the rest of the space. Again, we added both the Pearly Levanto and the Verde um, marble in here. And I love this fixture from Kohler. It's one of their newest. It's um, what I like about it. It's very clean. The shower and the handheld shower, as you can see, it's hanging from the ceiling. So what I love, it's like it makes the background really clear. So all you have is your like these knobs are just super fun. So it just gives a very clean look. Love that. And then we have lots of art, all from Markovitz Fine Art in town. We, I just think like art just brings life into a space and I wanted this space to be um, something that you're living, not just a, you know, like a bathroom, something where you can come and hang out and uh, appreciate. And we have this beautiful wall. So let's first talk about this Carol Fuhrman. Isn't she amazing? This is called The Contemplation. And um, Carol is an artist from New York City. She does this hyper-realism sculpture. And this one is very special because it also has a Swarovski crystal cap on it. Yeah. And then we have this um, photography from Anne Velvert. She's a French artist. And she does this beautiful um, photography where she puts this neon sign on it. That's kind of her thing. And I just thought it was like this very modern vibe with this classic look that you have. And I love this vignette right here with this arch. As you can see, if you can see this door is offset from that big dome arch on top. So we wanted to kind of diffuse that and create a design, this beautiful arch fluted marble right up here. It's probably one of my favorite thing in here. And I love how it broke off as you see, um, because it's a very soft marble. So when the fabricator was making it, he called me, he said, Huma, oh my gosh, it's breaking. I said, I love it. <laughs> I love how it looks so old, but you know, it just, it just brings character. And this one is the His Closet. His Closet, and we call it Shaken Not Stirred. James Bond. <laughs> we want a closet for a very, um, a man who's an art connoisseur. He wears Xenia. And this is his place where he comes at the end of the day, have a drink. He can have his martini shaken, not stirred. <laughs> and we have this bar right here for him. That is a setup, like, and we have the beautiful closet from the container store. And this piece I love here with container store, this is a recycled leather with a crock finish. And I absolutely love this because it brings texture and it also adds to that luxe vibe to this room that I was looking for. And I love it. I, I was super surprised when Container Store had this and offered me these different types of leather options and we picked this one and it just goes. And I love the color of the wall and the shade store. These are draperies and I added these velvet just again to go with the moody theme with some wool shellies from the shade store as well. Hi, my name is Christina Kim and I designed the main staircase and the second floor landings. Um, here, 
We designed a beautiful custom carpet runner, stair runner, um, and an orchid ombre. So I'm gonna take you upstairs and show you the second floor landing. So uh, the inspiration for this space was I'm often inspired by the movies. Um, I was once an aspiring actress, so I was really blown away by the films of Wong Kar Wai. Um, if you haven't, if you don't know him, you, you check out his work because the film sets are absolutely beautiful. It's one or two colors that completely fill the frame, and he really sets a mood. And that, that's what I was really going after. So the idea was I wanted to make a tropical lair where if you're traveling and you stumble across a really cool hidden spot off the beaten path and you have a drink and you stay out too late and then the next day you think, did it really happen? Did I imagine that magical night? Um, and I, I tried to imagine what that would look like. And to me, that looks like this. So when you reach the top of the landing, you're kind of surprised how much space there actually is. It's really daunting. Um, because it's kind of huge. Um, so I think a really great way to treat that is, you know, we brought sort of the traditional center um, hall table. These pass-through spaces are unbelievably useful during a party. So it's like you need a place to perch a drink, to have interesting coffee table books, or just like oddities, like plenty of oddities, please. <laughs> um, but all that stuff, makes people want to stop through a pass-through space. So if you have something like a huge wall and you don't know what to do with it, you know instinctively that you need art, you can either treat it with wallpaper or here, like an installation or a collection of something is really great. The bigger the better. Repetition is your friend when you have a giant wall to treat. So here we did surfboards, simple, um, but we picked this beautiful shiny oxblood color and then we sconced it up. <laughs> so we lit it just like you would light any piece of art. And I think that's really important and it's maybe a little unusual. Also really important in a pass-through space, especially a big one, is seating. You don't have to have a seating arrangement, um, but you definitely need seating. A space like this um, is really great if you want every little piece should in a, in a way be its own little showstopper. You don't have that many opportunities to, to keep people in the space for a little bit. So what's here should be really fun and very you. Here, um, I wanted to, in this space, I was really inspired by natural materials. It's, you know, tropical, a very naturally beautiful environment. Um, but I wanted to use a natural marble. But you can pick any marble, but why not do a color in a space like this? So this is um, Calcutta Viola, and it's got some deep plums, it's got pinks, and it looks like graffiti, and it's really cool, and you don't have to worry about, you know, it's not your kitchen countertop, but it's this little moment that's really special. It makes it really luxe. And to me, anything with a lot of movement in the marble, like that's a fashion marble. So it's, like, it's a great one to use for accents. This custom piece, we had it, um, we custom designed this in our studio and then had it made. So we have this teal green um, vinyl with um, camel colored leather. We used, you know, natural linens um, because people aren't going to be eating here. Um, it's just a really nice opportunity to use a material that you not you can't necessarily use in your kitchen. So, you know, go wild. Go wild in your hallway pass through. <laughs> um, vintage lighting and again, accessories. You can change up your floral arrangements all the time. We really kind of started with the rug and the wallpaper. The wallpaper, I wanted to do a large scale mural, a little sort of old world, but palms. And I wanted to, to feel super lush. Um, like you could feel the thick air and the palm trees moving. Like I wanted you to give, get that feeling. But because it's so large, I mean, you kind of get lost in it and maybe these weird angles get a little lost in it. Um, it's a good trick. <laughs> My name is Leah Alexander from the design firm Beauty is Abundant, and I am standing in the Beauty is Abundant intergalactic superstar bathroom. I was so inspired by all of the materials in this space. I really wanted to beam folks up when they walk into this bathroom, which is why we went for a UFO inspired light fixture. We have stars throughout in the wall and ceiling wallpaper, which are also mirrored in the super custom Cambria 
fabrication that we have on the floor and also on the shower walls. So our wall says, your beauty is abundant forever and ever, amen. And I really just wanted folks to feel limitless instead of a mirror. I'm like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I'm here to tell you that your beauty is abundant. And you know, it's just a really something that I want people to think about when they're sitting in traffic, like, gosh, you know, beauty is abundant. Look at that gorgeous, you know, whatever nearby. Um, so it's really a way of life. Sometimes design is like an out of body experience. You have these visions of just color schemes. I'm like, where did I even get this color scheme? I have no idea. Someone told me that it's a, a, a Texas Longhorns um, color palette situation. And we happen to be in Texas in this bathroom here. So that was a, a fun coincidence, but really um, the wallpaper is Serena and Lily. And, you know, I think that seeing the paper and seeing that metallic star kind of gleam off the paper, really set the tone for the rest of the material to come together and you know the stars really gave me that out of space vibe this bathroom is really a love letter to our clients it's really um, how we want to design for people using the most incredible materials with the most incredible tradespeople, so that we can come up with something so custom it's one of a kind it will never be replicated and that's what we do at beauty is abundant Hi, I'm Shelly Johnstone. I'm an interior designer from Lake Forest, Illinois, and I can't wait to show you around my garden view study and bath. So I kind of came up with this space. It's at the end of the house. It's kind of a little bit of a retreat. It's very subtle and serene. I clad the walls and most of the upholstery pieces with this really casual brown and white picking stripe fabric. Just kind of envelops you in the space. It's kind of casual and cozy. There's a wonderful jute rug on the floor, again, to keep the casualness going. And then for some modernity, I put this wonderful plaster chandelier from Julie Neal. And to carry on the plaster um, kind of feeling, this is my favorite piece in the room. It's this wonderful plaster panel that I had made with Cassie here in Dallas. And it has all my favorite things. It has flowers and birds and Greek key, and it's just really architectural and fun. And again, it's just filled with all my favorite painted furniture and it's just serene and, and quiet. And you get this beautiful garden view out these French doors and it's just kind of, kind of lovely. And then we have this really fun planter. I didn't wanna do the, the um, expected um, Versailles box. So we did this fun um, planter we had made. I just think it's very casual. And again, just a little unexpected. So the Bonkat is in the same um, ticking stripe fabric as most of the furnishings in the room and the walls. And again, it just kind of envelops you and it's just a really cozy piece and it's beautiful um, pink um, Samuel and Son fringe on the bottom. And we did this wonderful kind of pillow design. We did an embroidery treatment on the front of the pillows in this chocolate cocoa brown. And the edge of the pillows has this great um, Schumacher velvet that's just a really pretty silk velvet on the edges and also on the tufts on the buttons. So it's just a really pretty um, piece with little bespoke details and it's just a really lovely little space to sit and enjoy a book or a cup of tea and enjoy the day. Well, because on this side of the room we had the big plaster piece, I really wanted something that just was a little bit different in the balance of the room. So we did these brackets with just the white birds. Again, I love the white um, pops on the chair, um, painted chairs and also the white moldings. And then these great blue and white um, jars are just beautiful to add a little blue in the room. Again, a little interest and mix it up a little bit. So I wanted to add a little modernity to the space. So we have the plaster chandelier from Julie Neal, and then also this great overscale photograph from Dale Gothkin, which is, I think, really a little unexpected and just kind of interesting in the space. I would describe my personal style as traditional, but there's always this little um, kind of understated elegance. I never get too fussy. I don't really do ruffles. I keep it very tailored. And I always have a little bit of modernity if it's in the light fixture, the overscale photographs. There's always this cleanness to um, my work. When people walk into the space, I just want them to feel like they're escaping. It's serenity. It's very calm. It's also, um, it's edited. It's very understated. It would have been very easy to start adding things on the walls and putting more in, and I actually did the opposite. I took things away and just kept it very fresh and just really simple and edited. And sometimes that's harder. It's almost easier to put more things up and it feels 
decorated and done and there's something about like taking things away and editing it's it's um it makes it really special and clean and serene hey, welcome to the adjacent bath off my garden view study um, this bath is really fun it kind of has this really beautiful um, marble that has this rosa um, colors calcutta rosa it's a little hints of pink which kind of tie into the adjoining space we continued the ticking stripe fabric on this wonderful um, cornice and again the embroidered um, flower detail as well and then we had this pretty greek key trim around the um, the top of the ceiling and around the top of the baseboards as well and again in that really beautiful chalky pale pink and again the pink velvet from schumacher on this wonderful shell chair which is a little bit of a signature of mine i love monogram towels and peacock alley was generous enough to do these for me and they designed this custom monogram with me and i wanted it again very clean not fussy and i just i think it's really lovely and it's in a chocolate brown it's perfect in the space and then we have this great mirror from wolf hall again it's just wonderful and i think it's really pretty and again i did not overdo hanging things on the wall because I wanted the pieces to really stand out. I wanted the mirror to stand out. I wanted the beautiful marble and this Moroccan rug, which I just love. Um, the pattern is fabulous. The colors are great. And again, it just adds a little interest to this space. And then again, with the Dale Gothigan photograph, I think it's just edited and serene and um, clean and simple. Hi, I'm Chad Gracie with Gracie Interiors from New Orleans, Louisiana, and welcome to the rear mud room and pool bath, also known as the Bon Vivant's Hideaway. Come on in. I started this room with this fabulous wallpaper from The Veil, London, sourced through Faber Cut, and the colors really inspired me. I was definitely drawn to the purples, the grays, and the greens, and so that really kicked off my color palette for this space. Um, I knew that I didn't want to sort of match the purple color, but sort of highlight it. So that sort of led me to this beautiful color from Benjamin Moore called Bewitched. It's a color that I really hadn't used before, and I discovered it through this process of the design for this room, and now I want to use it everywhere. <laughs> so the window treatments um, are from Name Same in India, and they were custom made for my space. I did a custom run of a sheer for this back door that corresponded with the shade of the window. I thought it was really important to have sort of a smaller scale fabric in here, not to take away from the large scale of the parrot wallpaper, but still to sort of tie all the colors together. So it really is a play on scale and pattern. Even though this is a very small space, I really did take the opportunity to maximize the design potential to show people what you can do with a limited amount of square footage. Um, most of the art is either from um, New Orleans galleries on loan or from my own collection. I tried to feature artists that I love to use in my work here in the space. The light fixture up above is um, hammered brass from Arteriors and I thought it would highlight the gold leaf tea paper from Captain and Tout that I put on the ceiling, just for a little glimmer and sparkle up above. No surface left untouched. <laughs> Continuing with my play on pattern and scale, I designed a custom lampshade using this beautiful poppy fabric from Robert Keim. I thought it was the perfect off thing to add to the room. I think the general inspiration for both spaces, the bath and the hallway, was the sort of great mid-century supper clubs of New York City, El Morocco and the Stork Club. So the bathroom part of my space was really inspired first and foremost by this beautiful floor from Artistic Tile. It features a lilac and white marble with a black honed mosaic inlay. So also I used the red bewitched color to offset the purple tones in here as well. And I do think this color serves to tie the two spaces together. Um, with all this hardscape, the linens and bathrobes from Peacock Alley really soften everything. I love a bathroom that doesn't feel like a typical bathroom. I feel like it should be a gathering space. It should be elevated just as much as the rest of your home. Hi, I'm Ann Schooler. Welcome to the ladies' dressing room at Kipps Bay. This is Amelia Milton, who is very influential <laughs> in having this all come about since I was in Idaho fishing all summer. 
So um, we're so pleased you're here. So this room began with these mirrors that we found outside of London and they're faithful reproductions of an 18th century English country house, a famous chinoiserie house, a famous chinoiserie room called the Clayton Room. And so we started with those and then, you know, we had to keep the bar <laughs> raised. So we just kept adding, you know, over the top. <laughs> we felt that this room would embody refuge and luxury. I feel like women feel beautiful in beautiful rooms. I really believe that. And it made sense to start with mirrors, beautiful mirrors. They just up the game. I mean, it's hard to wear your Lululemon, sorry, Lululemon pants <laughs> and dressing in front of those mirrors. And um, so we had fun. We started with the mirrors and then we just kept twirling around the 18th century. Anne had this in her head. Um, we need something fluffy and ridiculous, really. And we went to start carpet and there it was. And they so kindly gifted us and they templated the room. And it could be more perfect. For yes. us, which was really nice, particularly since we have strawberries dripping all yeah. the way. <laughs> we were thinking late season, you know, not to be autumnal, but to be late summer. And so they're late season strawberries with kind of that palette. And I just, they're real. They're real. We change them out every three days. <laughs> so, but Margaret Ryder, who's a fantastic florist, created these. And again, it's kind of that over the top, belle epoque, beautiful room. You can eat your arrangement if you feel <laughs> so inclined. And I think an interesting thing also, after the mirrors are courtesan, this Venetian, she's a 17th century Venetian courtesan. And she's the spirit of the room, I think. She's pretty saucy, you know, up here. Okay, and she, she's from the 17th century and the courtesans had to wear black ribbons to denote their status. They wore different things to denote status. And all the wives in the 17th century in Venice were completely sequestered, but the courtesans had, had the fun. So we thought she was perfect for this room. So we worked with the container store on this closet and um, they were totally up for the challenge for incorporating couture clothes and fine antiques in the space. And they actually were the ones that came up with the idea of leather wrapping some of the closet fronts, which is fabulous. <laughs> um, so basically they put leather on top of the yes. cabinets. Mm -hmm. They have a new line, high, high end line. Who knew the container store? <laughs> and really, I think it just played up to the whole room, which we're so happily surprised about it. Yeah. Shouldn't be surprised having worked with them now. And these, these dresses were done by Michael Faircloth, who did Laura Bush's inaugural dresses. And so these were for other clients and he styled the entire room for us, including all of these are his dresses. And that, that dress was my daughter's wedding dress. So he brought all the, the, the series of events that led to her wedding dress, including the sort of muslin mock-up and then he drew on the muslin and it's, it's kind of fun to see them, the way it progressed. This room is a little more utilitarian, a little more function, maybe function over form. Mm -hmm. And that room is form over anything, <laughs> <laughs> everything form first. But I do think this was a great success and we loved working with the container store. They made it so easy. Loved working for my, with Michael Faircloth. Hi, I'm Ahmed Abu Zanat. Welcome to the Southern Sanctuary. We designed the space with some personal choices as ch such as the colors um, and the materials that we used. Um, this room is basically um, a refuge for someone even from their immediate um, surroundings. And what we did here is basically we have the meditation area in the back with a sculpture hanging from the ceiling. We separated the, the, the space to give it some privacy with this theatrical curtain on this side. And we also use the architecture of the space where the, the ceiling kind of curves down here as a tent and it kind of falls down to where the lounge area is. 
um, this space over here is again very personal so I am someone who likes to have my coffee in the morning in a quiet space so we designed this coffee bar on this side of the room and we used the different textures and different colors of the stone to create an interesting and layering effect while having the appliances within a beautiful composition um, the showpiece in this space is really the rug where it ties up everything together in terms of color scheme, the, the lines kind of flow towards the different functions we have in the room. We also have on this side a small desk and, you know, kind of like a console moment here where, you know, again, if someone needs to write or read or anything of that sort. And um, we also designed the bathroom um, for the space. Um, for the bathroom, we wanted to create a grand moment in a small space. So we went for the graphic uh, wallpaper and we had a very um, luxe vanity made for the space just to you know, add that luxury feel to it. Um, so for the meditation spot, we basically worked with, again, like the colors are, this is where the colors kind of graduates towards like the soothing colors of lavender and light pinks. Um, the platform bench is basically when I'm meditating personally, I like to have some place where I can put my books and like my things next to me. Um, um, the art piece is basically uh, from a friend of mine. It's, it's Arabic written. And basically what it says is don't lose yourself in a world that's not offering you anything. So it's kind of a reminder to like always come back to like, you know, oneself. And um, we added more lights here so that when the moment is happening, we can dim the lights, the, the room lights, and just use the diffused light in this area. So um, usually in my designs, I spend a lot of time with my clients just really understanding how they use this, their spaces and like what do they want from each area in their spaces. And then we go into some personal choices where I can ask about things like their fav favorite um, wardrobe piece or anything that's really personal to them. And I try to combine all of these together um, where the function is meeting the aesthetic of the space. And it's very important to me that there are hints of every element that each person in the household like, to, you know, to have. I wanted them to feel, I wanted people to feel like a Zen moment when they arrive to this space. And um, I feel like leaving some negative space in the room that leads up to the back of the room is very inviting. And it is one of those moments where kind of like the eye has a moment to relax. Um, and then as they start walking around, you know, they start exploring the different areas we have. Um, for the small foyer and the staircase area, I wanted to create, again, an impactful um, space where people will be arriving to it and they just like want to explore the inside of the room. Um, part of the personal choices that I made, you know, I'm someone who designed lighting at some point during my career and this was really fun to work with. I have this piece over here, it's part of a body called endangered species, which is something very close to, to my heart where, you know, it's a gorilla, so it's very important to bring awareness to that. And this started with the blues, which kind of like represent the seas and the um, skies color. And that's, that's, these are the colors that are very soothing to a lot of people. Um, the lighting installation, um, we wanted to kind of like have a moment where people can explore the staircase but not really go downstairs and um, this was a fun element to just add light to the space and kind of like make it drape down or somehow blocking the space. Hi, I'm Lucinda Loya with Lucinda Loya Interiors and welcome to my bedroom. It's called Portrait of a Woman. So. When I was accepted as one of the designers here at Kips Bay, I took a step back and thought to myself, okay, what statement do I wanna make? What's gonna be my approach? Where do I begin? And the first thing that came to mind was to be bold, strong, and fearless, like all the women we all know. And standing together and supporting each other is something that's so important. And I really wanted to represent that strong, bold, beautiful, fearless woman. And I feel like I have done that. She is uh, warm and thoughtful and intelligent and worldly. And I mean, she's, she's really the ultimate woman, like, um, like we all are, you know, we, we rule the world. And it, it's um, a representation of that. So I enlisted women artisans 
uh, to help me out with this room. And I started with this rug company rug that is designed by two sisters, Rodarte. So from there, I then collaborated with Porter Tilio and uh, we created this fabulous hand painted wallpaper. Um, I had them applied to these wall panels and then we stretched it over the ceiling to make a really strong statement. Another thing I love about this room are these lights. Um, there are so many facets to this room and um, all the details that went into it and the thought process behind it, but this represents femininity and um, they are called Collier chandeliers. So all of the tones in the room are very warm and there is a sense of black and white, which I believe should be in every space, but uh, for the most part, they're tones of roses and, and uh, beiges and grays. And I think that that always welcomes uh, warmth. And uh, I took my color palette out of the rug and kind of splashed it everywhere. I also did color blocking within the drapes. The window was off centered and I needed to figure out a way to correct that. And uh, I felt like if I just made them more asymmetrical and played around with the shears that I could accomplish it. I also did um, the same thing with, with the walls. I did three vertical stripes in the room and they're all very soft and warm tones. So this bedroom is a retreat and I decided to design the nightstands and the headboard and the mirrors to encompass everything. And the person living in this room needs to be able to come in, relax, throw the sheets back, and if you'll notice here, I had monogrammed Lost in Paradise because that's really where she is when she is in this room. This is her very own space. Hi, I'm Blair Murphy of Blair Designs out of Nashville and I was given the mudroom space at Kitts Bay this year. When we found out that this was our space, we wanted to make sure that we made it a little bit more than a series of connecting halls. We wanted this space to have a moment of its own and um, be welcoming at the same time. And the kicking off point was this gorgeous Degourney paper. This gorgeous paper is called Braganza and it is made by Degourney. It's actually a hand painted mural um, that was custom made to the scale of our space. It was quite a labor of love and it ended up taking a little bit longer than anyone anticipated. So our paper was coming in batches last week and we were installing it you know, up to the very last minute. The final batch was originally not due to come in until today and Degourney was amazing and they actually flew one of their employees from California to India, 30 hours, to pick up the last batch of paper and then she flew back to Dallas and delivered it to us last week. And it was installed by, you know, 7 p.m. on the final day of installation. So, and we covered this downstairs area up into our stairwell with this gorgeous paper. Um, we also hinted at Portugal by tiling the stair risers here. Um, and we used very traditional lambrequin treatments on the windows, which reminded me of some of the window treatments that I saw in, in the traditional palaces of Portugal. So this was our nod at the mudroom space. Um, we decided to put a tall piece in here that would offer some storage as well as benches that would provide the opportunity for you to sit down and take off your shoes should you need to. Um, our colors are um, very traditional Portuguese colors. We try to bring in that blue and white that you see in the tiles all over the country um, and hinted that everywhere we could. I love our powder room space. Uh, we used a gorgeous viola marble um, and then we combined that with a more traditional limestone on the floor and in the console. Um, the walls uh, reminded us of terracotta and we added in an antiquity painting um, to, to hint at the old as well in the space. In this piece, what we did is we actually created half of a traditional Bjorn Cité. Um, 
given the limitations and the depth of this space, we knew we couldn't accommodate an entire chate, so we put half of one in here. We custom designed this to be a little bit more contemporary at the bottom and covered it in a very traditional embroidered fabric, embroidery being um, an art that is also common to Portugal. So another unique thing about our space is that it continues from downstairs to upstairs with this gorgeous grand stairwell. Um, we tile the risers of the stairs, also nodding back to the azuelos that are um, what Portugal is commonly known for. Right, as you come upstairs, we change direction a little bit while still continuing to tie everything together. The whole area is covered in a mustard um, wool fabric uh, that nods to the yellow facades that you often see on the buildings in Portugal, as well as the colors of the rugged coastline as you go into the Algarve and the areas of Comporta. Hello, I'm Patricia McLean of Patricia McLean Interiors in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm reporting live from the Kipps Bay Dallas Show House. I designed the Northern Bedroom and I'm calling it the Traveler's Retreat. Well, I was given two beautiful large windows and decided to leave this one open to the garden, but I wanted a backdrop for the bed, so that is remaining closed. The fabric is a sewn Britain fabric, so it's on linen print. It's got about seven colors that you can't even discern in the fabric. All the bedding is from Peacock Alley. This is silk, this is linen, and this is the um, satin, sateen cotton with the faggoted edge. And it's kind of a mix, it's kind of a high-low because I wanted this room to seem elegant, but also cozy. So the um, pattern in the silk is really great from the Turkish rug. It's an antique Ottoman, uh, antique Ushak that brings all the colors in. Um, on either side, I have the French tables and they're kind of country antiques. I didn't want it to be too dressy. These are antique double happiness jars, wired as lamps, and I picked up on the little scallop motif there. The draperies are from um, Shade Store and we use this precious pom-pom trim to kind of add to the fun. I like for it to seem lively and at home and just come on in, come and stay for a while. I got luggage racks, they're painted blue to rest the room. I use antique prints and this is another French piece. Um, one top secret bit of information is that behind here is a set of French door handles that were my nemesis. Voila! This is a painting I bought in England about 20 years ago and have framed and it stays in my house. I always bring some things from home just because I have to fill out my room and you don't always find it. So that was a perfect solution for that. This is from Moy Lampshade from London. These are, again, an antique piece wired as a lamp. Okay, so these are the most interesting window treatments of all. Behind this window, door number one, is a closet door and it was gonna totally throw things off. So I used the shade from the shade store. This is a beautiful, woven shade with blackout lining so the closet door is gone so then i did two window treatments to balance it out it makes it really architecturally pleasing and i love window treatments everyone comes to see my window treatments and i'm known for that so this really added to this wall and i love to use day beds so it was the perfect little niche for the day beds um this is was just tan before, so I've slip covered it with the sewn Britain fabric, and I love the way this fabric lends itself to the furniture. The pattern was just lined up exactly. Then at the bottom, I added one little strip to finish it off, but the front is my favorite part, the scallops. It was on the table at the workroom, and it looked a little plain, so I said, what if we just went with the paisley? So that's really one of my main features for the bed, and of course, this made up beautifully too. There are about seven colors in this fabric, which you wouldn't know until you study it, but Sone sent me the history of the fabric, so I know that. The little ottoman has sort of a Raj feel. It's a bit Moorish here with this um, Indian pattern. The tables are from Sone Britain. I love the brass rope, and the shelves are leather, which makes them so chic. And they have the cream on top and the sea foam on the bottom. And there again, that color is in the rug. It's in the in the fabrics, it all comes together. These are actually polychrome, they're not marble, um, but they're from Wolf Hall Antiques. They were very generous. I love, I brought, I love antiques, I brought a lot, but I never have enough in a show house, so they were really my home base here in Dallas. These are antique textiles made into pillows, which there again just add a little layer of elegance. This room is more, supposedly more relaxed. Um, I use brass, that's a very natural thing. Um, 
the barometer. I love to use barometers in my work. Some of the barometers I use are completely gilded and mortar gilded and bright, shiny. This one's a little worn. It's a little bit, does it have blue paint behind it? It's just a little more relaxed. So I've named this room the Traveler's Retreat. And at home, I actually have a guest room where a lot of things from travels end up. And so I thought, what if I translated that to a show house room? We're always trying to come up with new ideas. I like for people to feel like, oh, this could, room could exist somewhere. So this is perhaps a map someone bought back from a trip. On the other nightstand, I have travel books for South Africa. I just had a trip before the pandemic. And so they're studying up, they're getting ready to go. Um, this is a painting I bought in London, a watercolor on one of my antique trips. Over here is my favorite photograph ever. It's um, actually from Night Safari. I took this with an iPhone and um, it's just a great reminder of the trip. But there he is, they shine the flashlight and I was able just to, just to snap him. On the other table is um, a picture of my mom and me at the horse show in England, the Windsor Horse Show. And this is actually sort of timely because it's my mom and the queen we were in the royal enclosure and so she asked if she could take a picture so i took a picture for having taken the picture <laughs> but we love england we're big anglophiles and we've been sad this week but enjoyed watching all the festivities and that's a little piece from her childhood that she had I, I can't do all of this without being collaborative and one of the things that helps so much is to have it captured in renderings and so here's a living room that i did um, and it's a beautiful watercolor by Alan Mason. This is the St. Regis bedroom I did, and it's a beautiful rendering by Jonathan LaCrosse. He also did my rendering for this show house, which you'll see when you take that um, journal home. But um, it's always a collaborative effort, and I, I can't render at this degree that these architects can. I love decorating, and I ordered this light from London. It's a Charles Edwards piece. It's Hague blue with brass, and it was custom designed and built for the show house and arrived just in time. It's called the pineapple light because you can see it has a pineapple shape at the top and at the crown. Um, but I wanted to bring in some more blue. There wasn't quite enough. These are luggage racks I thought to put because we're waiting for the traveler to come to the retreat. These are just from a local retailer and I got my men to paint them the um, hag blue. So brought a little more color in, but that's something you could try at home and just added a little note for high-low. I like for things to look pretty, but also you know, there are ways you can add in things that don't have to be so precious as antiques. Hi, I'm Jessica Davis with Atelier Davis. I designed the primary corridor and powder room at this year's Kipps Bay Show House. I really wanted the space to feel like a little jewel box kind of inspired by the Texas sunsets. Um, I'm originally from Texas and so I kind of used these beautiful earth tones and I also wanted to nod to all of the nature outside and the beautiful site that the home is on. Um, I used this amazing painting by local Dallas artist Erica Huddleston. Um, I wanted the space to feel really enveloping and calm and kind of a place to pause before entering the primary bedroom. Um, and I also use these amazing light fixtures by Rosie Lee Studio and a wallpaper that's kind of a nod to Texas limestone. Um, in the powder room, I really wanted to lean further into that sunset motif and use these deep terracotta hues to really create a lot of drama. Um, I used this artistic tile mosaic and really accentuated the sweep of this curve. Um, along with the rosy Lee light fixture um, and the beautiful sort of architectural vessel from Kohler. Um, I also used my own hardware line Nest Studio here and kind of created an interesting funky way to utilize the hardware. I think powder rooms are a great place to play with palette and texture and really punch something up and create almost like an exclamation point in the home because you don't spend a lot of time here. So, you know, something that might feel crazy in your master bedroom is okay to do in your powder room. I wanted to drape this entire wall. This is a beautiful textile by Brooke Pertagon out of LA. And there's actually an ugly HVAC closet behind here. So that was kind of my solution for turning it into basically a feature. I sort of envision people stopping and kind of resting here and I love to play with asymmetry, so 
I decided that scooting the bench over and kind of creating this vignette with the books and the concrete hand would kind of be a nice moment. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.